This week's episodes were brought to you by the generous support of Petrie Michaela. Hey you folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to a very different tutorial for our Project Porcupine, our base building game in Unity. It's going to be pretty different because we're not going to open Unity at all today. Instead, we're going to be working entirely with Git and GitHub. It is finally time for the project to be moved over to GitHub so that everyone can start collaborating and contributing to this project. And there's, I think, a few different reasons why this is really, really good timing. Hey, I mean, it was always going to happen. I didn't start with it right away because I wasn't sure exactly what our workflow was going to be. Plus, it's really easy for new um, users to just download a zip and be properly caught up. Learning how to use Git is, well, it's kind of a whole other little beast, but we are going to just have to do that now. It's good timing for another couple of reasons. After I put this up, I want to leave a week or two go by for this to sort of settle and for us to figure out any kind of issues. In particular, while this video is going to be the tutorial for how to contribute to Project Porcupine via Git and GitHub, our workflow may change from the time this video gets made. So be sure to look for any annotations or a link down below. There may be an updated YouTube video or there might be like a link to a wiki page or something like that about the correct workflow to contribute to this particular project. So um, keep your eyes open for that. The other thing is one of the most common requests I get for tutorials is to make a pure C-sharp like complete beginner's guide to programming. Uh, as opposed to, while I try to keep the C-sharp code relatively simple in most of our Unity projects, it's getting a little hairier in Project Porcupine because there's a lot going on. Um, and you know, so I try to keep it simple and, and hope that people can absorb the specifics through osmosis. If you've never programmed anything in your life, it's probably a little intimidating. So I put up a poll on Patreon and people voted overwhelmingly in favor of a pure C-sharp tutorial. And not only that, but in a week and a half is the next Let Em Dare which takes up a whole weekend. And then after that, I'm gonna make a couple of videos, post-mortem sort of analysis of the game. So it's a perfect time to step away from Project Porcupine itself for a couple of weeks and let this whole GitHub thing sort of like simmer, let people work on it, develop a workflow and start contributing. And then when we come back, then we will be working in the project in this particular uh, style. Now, it, the tutorials going forward are still going to be quite radically different though, because it's no longer gonna be in a situation where 100% of everything that has happened in Project Porcupine will have been made by me. In fact, every time I load it up and I resynchronize with the master project, new things will hopefully be in there. Hopefully people who are better artists will have made graphics. Hopefully people who are great at designing user interfaces will have redesigned our UI. Hopefully people will have implemented new furniture doing, using the Lua and XML. Hopefully people will have implemented new features entirely in C Sharp. Maybe they've redesigned the pathfinding system, the job system, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera doing a probably a much better job than I ever did. My whole goal was to set up an initial scaffolding and then let let you really creative people get in on it. But how are we gonna do that? Well, hopefully some of you already know how to work with Git and GitHub, but some of you have never even heard of it or don't even know what a version, versioning system is. A versioning system, the simplest way to explain it is, um, let if you're working with any sort of versioning system, whether that's Git, Git or Subversion or CSV or something like that, you, after you, whenever you make a change, you're gonna commit those changes in the versioning system. Then you make another change to your program and you'll commit those changes. It's like, it's like saving, but more so. You make some more changes, you'll commit, and you'll realize something's gone horribly wrong. And the last set of changes you were just working on have horribly broken everything. Well, one of the things a versioning system can do is it simply lets you roll back to a previous version of the code, which is fantastic. So it acts as that sort of safety net. Not only that, but the repository where the, the version information is stored could be stored on a separate drive. I often like to store it in my Dropbox folder so that whenever I commit something and push it to my repository, then it gets automatically uploaded to the internet via Dropbox. So if my computer spontaneously catches on fire, I still have access to the entire history of my project and can load it on another computer, not only the latest version, but at any checkpoint along the way. But the real strength of this is the idea that you can work on the same project concurrently with other programmers. You can have two, three, 10, 20, 100 people all working on the same project. And how do you have, if, if I'm working, I'm, I'm implementing feature A and you're implementing feature B, 
and then we make, both make our changes. How do we merge those two changes together back into the master program? Well, that's the other thing that these versioning programs do is they help you work out these details, merge your changes together as one and have a cohesive whole that doesn't break down. And that's extraordinarily important when we're going to be working on what will be an open source project here, which hopefully as many of you as possible will contribute to. Now, I have not actually managed an open source project which allows sort of like indefinite contribution from just about anyone on the internet before. So it's going to be a bit of a learning experience for me, which is why I say do check the description box down below to see if there's an updated version of this. But basically, there's going to be a master repository here on github.com, which is a site very well known for hosting Git projects, in particular, a lot of open source stuff. So team porcupine slash project porcupine. This is the master project. The idea is at any given point, someone could say, just download, just download a zip, the entire project. This would be a Unity project. And they could build the project from here and play it and the game would be good and groovy. But in addition to that, other people, and well, at the start, I, I'm the only contributor that is going to have access to that. And that'll probably still be the case for a really long time. Ideally, I'd like to find someone up there in the community who's really good at contributing, clearly a good programmer, very diligent and passionate for the project, and add more people who can manage this project and accept pull requests, especially if the speed of the, the, the contribution starts to get a little bit higher. You know, get other people to, to sort of manage things, which is going to be what I'm really looking for. But even if I don't do that, even if I'm the only person with access to the main project itself, you guys can still work on it and you can still contribute to the project. And you do that by making a fork. So there's going to be a lot of new topics introduced over here. I will try to keep things as straightforward as possible and not screw up too many things. All right, so let's go and make a change to Project Porcupine. Let's contribute something to this code. I'm going to work exactly the same way you would. And in fact, I think it's probably a good habit if I generally am going to work in exactly the same style that you guys do as well, rather than making changes directly to Project Porcupine, which may not be accountable in exactly the same way. So to start off with, I'm going to be on the official Team Porcupine repository. You can see here Team Porcupine slash Project Porcupine and also in the URL over here. So this is the official one. Uh, your view of this would be slightly different. It'll have slightly fewer buttons probably because you are not the, the owner of the repository. But other than that, everything is fine. And we notice that this readme file is very bland and boring. And that's what we would like to contribute. You know, we're not going to make programming changes. We're not opening Unity at all. We're lo simply looking to make changes to this readme file in this particular one. So what do we do first? First thing to do is fork this project. Make your own personal copy of this repository in your own personal account. Obviously, you need your account set up on GitHub, but other than that, you're going to have your own account. It's going to be your username slash Project Porcupine. And it says forked from Team Porcupine Project Porcupine. And what's interesting is other people could come and fork this version of the project and so on. It's really kind of cool open source ecosystem. All right, so I have my own personal fork in my own personal repository, and I can make any changes I want here. Although, if I'm going to want to be able to contribute these changes back to the master project, there's a nice little workflow that you can follow to let things not be super broken. First of all, you do need to make sure that you have a Git client on your computer. Now, um, if you are on Linux or the Mac, there's an excellent, excellent command line version of Git for that. If you're on Windows, you'll probably need to download the Git for Windows version of it, which adds Git bash. Basically, bash is that that Unix-like shell that, um, that Mac and Linux and things um, you tend to use, and it gives you the same tools that you would probably use from a terminal on Mac and Linux um, on Windows, and it's great. This is actually the way that I almost exclusively work with Git, but for the sake of this, what I'm going to do is actually use GitHub Desktop. This is an excellent little app that I hadn't used before that GitHub provides. It's only for Mac and Windows. So if you're on Linux, you will just use the command line version of it, but it actually works pretty well. So I think um, we're going to go through that. It simplifies some of the login issues uh, that you might have to deal with. I don't want to explain how to set up SSH or, or different things like that for people. So you would download this again, either for Mac or Windows is fine. Once you download it, you can have it running over here. And you should, I believe, start with this view here. Actually, I think there's like a mini tutorial first. In the, the gear over in the top right corner, you can go into your options. I have set up a default path over here. I'm going to be saving my, my GitHub clones to h slash GitHub by default. And then you can configure it, username, or, or sorry, your name, your email address, as well as your account. You can add an account over here. It'll ask for your username and password. It'll get everything synced up. Excellent. Just get that configured and you're going to be golden. So get started by adding a repository. You can create your own repository on your computer with this over here. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to clone the one on the site because again, this is my personal version of the repo. Quill 18 slash project porcupine, but you can't really make changes here. What you really want is you want to copy this on your desktop. And that's what this button over here is for clone or download, which is a button that's available in any repository. But we specifically want to clone the repository that we have access to, because if you clone the parent one, because you can do that, right? So you go to team, this is the official repo. This button will still be here. Hell, it'll, I think it'll even be here if you're not logged into GitHub. It'll still be here. You can clone it, but you can't, if you make any changes, you won't be able to push those changes into the um, back onto GitHub, for example. So if you're on your personal version, which is this, and you clone your personal version, then you will be able to push changes back in. If you are using the command line, you're gonna to wanna to clone either with SSH, this is the SSH address, or you can use HTTPS address, either way is fine beyond the scope of this particular tutorial, but it's actually a really nice way to work. You can also just download the, fo the folder as a zip. If you do this, you're just gonna get the whole project and you'll be able to open it in Unity and just be able to work on that. That's fine, but it won't be a Git project, which means you won't be able to push those changes again. Or if you hit open in desktop, it'll open in desktop over here. It'll ask you where you wanna save it. So I'm just gonna save it to H GitHub and it's gonna clone it. It's gonna download everything from the website and give you a copy of the project on your personal computer. It's taking a little longer than expected. Although, oh, I didn't realize Steam's actually downloading an update in the background. That's not gonna help things. So let me close that. There we go. Okay, excellent. So now I have my own personal project Porcupine and I can hit this button here, open this repository in Explorer. Sure. And there we go, there's my project. I can open this in Unity. Um, just open Unity and point it to this folder, H GitHub Project Porcupine, which is where I'm storing it. And that's that's excellent and groovy. But again, I said, we're not gonna even open Unity here. What I'm concerned with is I wanna make a change to this readme file. I wanna add some extra detail. I wanna add a link to the YouTube channel, something like that. So I could just edit this now. This is just a text file. I can open up and say Sublime Text and make any changes I want. But that's not really the ideal workflow. In general, in Git, even if you're not working on GitHub, in general, when you wanna add a new feature, the best thing to do is to create a branch of your project and work in that branch. The advantage of it is you can switch back and forth between the branch and the master build if you have to check something in the base version or if you, if you know, sometimes what happens in real life is you're working on a, on a feature, you get about halfway done, and then something comes up, there's another bug or your boss has decided some other feature is more important, it's gotta be done ASAP. So what you do, is you pop out of the branch you're working on, back to master or whatever, then you create a new branch and work on that bug fix, that super critical bug fix that's gotta be fixed by you know five o'clock this afternoon. You work on that super important bug fix in a new branch. You, you confirm that it's working, you merge that back in the master. Now the master build has got your new bug fix, which is great. Then you go back to your fun feature branch where you're adding, I don't know, like, um, sparkles to menus or something like that. And you can make sure that your branch gets updated to your newly fixed master. And then you just keep working on your, your branch. And it's fantastic to be able to do that. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna do the proper workflow. And this is really the idealized workflow for collaborative work on GitHub. We're gonna go back into our little program here. Now, if you're working from the command line, you can create branches there, perfectly easy. You just go, you would, uh, the easiest way is probably to go the command git checkout dash B. Anyway, if, if you just look up um, things on, on the internet, you can find that. From inside this program, the way to create a branch is to hit this button here, create new branch. So we're gonna create a new branch called um, add YouTube link to readme. Actually, if you don't type, if you, I could do it like this, add YouTube link to readme, that'd be fine. But the branch is actually gonna be called this version over here. You don't really have to be quite this verbose, but that's gonna be fine. And these are temporary. We're not gonna keep these branches around forever. When we're done, working on our branch and we've committed it back to the master project, we're just gonna delete the branches and clean everything up. So I'm gonna create this branch like that. So now I have two branches. Actually, technically I have a third one. We're gonna talk about this one later on. I have two branches, master and add YouTube link to readme. And I can swap back and forth between these two. And it's like, oh, okay, th things are, are happening, I guess. I don't know what this means. Don't worry about it. We're gonna deal with that in a moment. So we're gonna make sure we are on the add YouTube link to readme branch which is confirmed because it's here. And in the repository, now we're gonna make a change to the readme file. So I'm gonna open this up. I'm just using Sublime Text, it's a good text editor. And I'm gonna say, um, if you want to see how this game was made, check out uh, the videos, videos on YouTube. 
and I'm going to go and put a link to youtube.com slash quilly team creates something like that a little advertisement yeah never hurt anyone there now i'm going to save this change excellent so i have made this modification i'm going to close that and if i go back in here it's going to let me know Ooh, there's a change the readme file has been changed it actually tells me what the changes are it says these four lines were added that's what these pluses are these four lines were added i could even make i could delete something or make a modification let's say i go back in here and say um a base building game in space. Um, actually, let's do it this way. A Unity. Whoops. A Unity base building game in space. So we're going to see what that looks like if I go over here. Ah, the it says this line was deleted and this line was added. Doesn't just It doesn't modify a line exactly. It removes the old one and adds the other one. So it'll keep that up and it'll, even if it's a huge file and you're making changes in a few different places, it'll correctly determine everything almost all the time. So that's great. So now that we've done that, we can commit this change. I think this has to be checked to lock this in. If I go, uh, oh, um, yeah, no, we want to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to commit this change over here by typing in a description of the changes we have just made. This is really important. The whole process with the, the versioning system is the idea that you make a change and you commit it to your repository. Whether And this is just working locally. This is on our local repository in this particular branch. We're going to say, uh, so the purpose of this change was to add a YouTube link to the readme file. That's the purpose of this change. We can put in a description, but I think it's clear enough. So I'm going to commit this. Now, what's cool about having done this commit over here, we can actually see the details in this line over here. This this branch that we have, add YouTube link to readme, you can see things, things are happening over here, which is kind of exciting. Now, if I go, let's say, take a look at the readme file. We're going to confirm this. Yep, my link's in there. That's great. Here's what I'm going to do. In the GitHub desktop client, I'm going to switch to the master branch. So I'm back over on the master branch over here. And let's open up the readme file. What happened to my link? It's gone. Well, the reason it's gone is because in the master branch, this link doesn't exist. It only exists in this recent branch that I'm working on. So now I've switched back. I've switched back to the add YouTube link to readme branch. We'll open up the readme. Huh, my changes are back. And this is, that's one of the beauties of the system. So we have this branch where we've implemented this new feature. The feature is we added a link to the readme file. It's not very sophisticated, but it's there. What do we do with it now? Well, there's a few different things we can do. Um, we could merge this branch to our local build of master. And I think that, you know, if you're just working on your own project, that's probably what you would do at this point. You'd be like, I am satisfied that my work on this branch is done. I have tested it. There's no typos. The game still runs perfectly fine, so I can merge it back into the branch, which you can do. Uh, what you can do here, if you wanted to, select the master branch, and then um, and then pick the, there we go, add YouTube to readme, and you could update. So I could update master from this sub-branch over here. We're not going to do that here. That, that's not what we're here to do. Instead, what we're going to do is we're switching back to add YouTube link to readme, and we're going to publish this. We're going to publish this to our remote. That is to say, the official GitHub site. Now, I think we don't actually have to do this technically to do the pull request. But having done that, which is really interesting, and actually in the background, you can see that page just reloaded. GitHub reloads in real time. It lets us know, hey, we recently pushed a branch to the server. And that's great. So now we've got this backup. We could delete everything on our computer, and it's fine because this branch still exists on, on uh, GitHub. Now, you, if this, this pull-down menu, you actually don't see the new branch because even though this updates in real time for some reason, if we refresh this page, you have to refresh the page to see the branches. Now we can. So if we scroll down and look at our readme, it's bland. If we switch over to the new branch, hey, it's there. That's very exciting and back and forth. So we've got this branch in there and we can merge the two together. There's a few things we can do, but one of the big things that's prompting me to do is, hey, would you like to compare this to the master branch and do a pull request? A pull request is you're asking, you're bundling up some sort of set of changes from a branch typically, 
and you are asking the maintainer of a project of, hey, would you like, I'm requesting that you pull these changes into your project. We can do that from the web page. We can also do it from the client. I actually quite like it from the client. So we're on the add YouTube link to readme. I'm gonna set up a pull request over here. And so I can set up a pull request to pull these changes into master. This would be my master. I would ask, be asking the maintainer of the Quill 18 Project Porcupine repository to, to, to merge these together, which you can totally do. Very valid workflow. Um, but that's, I mean, that's fine. We could have just done that ourselves anyway. What we're most interested in is we would like to pull our changes into the official Team Porcupine Master. You are happy with your changes. You have a branch that is well detailed over here. Add a YouTube link to the readme file. Um, this will help people find find the YouTube tutorials explaining how Project Porcupine works. There you go. So I'm going to send the pull request. So I'm sending it to the official Team Porcupine. So I'm going to hit that send. Awesome. And I can view it on GitHub. Ooh, what does this mean? Well, if by hitting that button, note, I am on the official repo at this point. Team Porcupine slash Project Porcupine. I could also see that. If I just went to scan, this is the official repo. I can see pull requests over here of one. So by clicking on that, I can see all the current pull requests. Some guy called Quill18 has a pull request, the purpose of which is add a YouTube link to readme file. So I can click on this. Anyone can click on this. This is totally public information. Anyone can click on this. They can see the description that I left in here. We can also see the list of changes. Ah, there we go. Files changed. There we go. <laughs> Going a little crazy. Here's the file that was changed. What happened? Okay. Uh, this Quill 18 guy changed this line. So remove this line, added this one, but it's a change. And then... Um, he added more lines over here. There's a few things I can tweak this. I can make some comments. I can do a few things. That's fine. I can confirm how many uh, commits would be involved in this, and I can have a conversation. I can I can put in a note maybe. I can say, uh, let me think. So now, anyone can leave a note over here. It's very important. This can be you. This could be me. This can be someone else who's maintained the project. Whatever. I'm gonna for now. I'm gonna speak as the maintainer of the project. Okay, I'm not the Quill 18 guy who submitted this patch. I'm the maintainer. I'm gonna say, let me think about this and see if I'm going to accept your pull request. So I'm just leaving a comment, and then other people can leave comments and you know say whether they think it's good or not. So I've left a little comment there. I'm a Team Porcupine member, but anyone can comment on this. It's perfectly public. If you got a GitHub account, you can comment on whether you think this should be included or not. And at a certain point, this area here, this is something only I can see because I am the owner of the official project, I can hit this button. And I'm gonna say, you know what? That sounds great. I'm gonna merge this pull request. And I hit that button, and I'm gonna leave this note in here. That's perfectly fine. I could say, I could have left another comment to say accepted or whatever. I'm gonna leave this note. I'm gonna say, yep, confirm the merge. So I have done that. Pull request successful. You're all set. Um, this pull was accepted. This line here, I am seeing because I am the Quill 18 who um, created the, the bug fix, okay? So I can delete my branch over in my project. I'm not gonna do this right now, but this is not something that the project maintainer sees. This is The Quill 18 on Team Porcupine wouldn't be able to delete your branch. Don't worry about it. But now if we look at the main project here, hey, look at that, it's got a link. And it says, it's got that word Unity in there. This is the, this is the official Team Porcupine, Project Porcupine the changes have been accepted. And that's that. We can take a look at all the commits. In fact, if you see that, you'll see I, I practiced a bunch. Ooh, made some typos as well. Excellent. Um, I, I was practicing the workflow to make sure that I was comfortable with explaining it properly. Uh, and then we're there. So this is the state where we currently are. I can always roll back. If I've decided one of these changes is a mistake, I can roll back to a previous one. That'll be fine. But this change is officially in there. Hey, that's really exciting. But let's, let's take off the Team Porcupine hat and go back to our personal project. This is Quill 18 slash Project Porcupine. This is our personal version, our personal fork of the project. There's still no link over here. Why is that? Well, we are on our master branch of this project. I can switch to the add YouTube link to readme branch, which is fine, but doesn't it feel a little bit odd? The answer is yes. And in particular, if I'm back on my master branch, I can see that my branch is two commits behind 
Team Porcupine Master. What are we going to do about that? Well, there's a few different things. We can actually, on our own build, we can do a pull request against the Master. It's kind of interesting, right? I can do this. Um, the base fork is the thing that is going to be changed, and the head represents the thing from which the changes are coming. Right now, there's nothing to compare, and that's because we're trying to pull changes from our personal project into the base fork, which honestly, you guys probably wouldn't see this. I, I suspect this would not be the case. But if I try switching the base around, now it makes a lot more sense. We're treating my personal project as the base and the official one as the head, and I could make a pull request on my own personal project to pull in the, ch the latest changes from the official thing. I think this is a little bit awkward, personally, and I think what you're probably going to prefer to do is simply in the GitHub, um, in your GitHub desktop client over here, we're going to synchronize things. In fact, there could be 30 other people that have made changes to the project since the last time you worked on it, and you want to make sure you're up to date. So here's what we're going to do. This, first of all, in the GitHub desktop project, there's always this other branch, which is the official Team Porcupine Master um, the, the official Team Porcupine Master, as opposed to your personal master. This is the official Team Porcupine Master over here. And we want to make sure that it's up to date. This is one of the reasons I use the uh, GitHub desktop client, because it actually automatically creates this, this link to the quote-unquote upstream branch. If you're using the command line, you'll have to manually make sure you've got a reference to the upstream branch that you can link to. So what I'm going to do, with Team Porcupine Master selected, I'm going to sync. There we go. So I'm, having done that, now, this, which represents the official Team Porcupine Master, I'm now up to date. And in fact, if I open the repository in Explorer right now, I can verify that. I am on the official Team Porcupine Master, which... All right, so I'm running into a, a funny little problem here that I can't quite figure out. What's supposed to happen? If you're on the Team Porcupine Master over here, and you hit sync, it should download the, the latest version of the um, official Team Porcupine Master. But if you look at the history, we can see that the latest one we got is merge pull request number three from Quill 18, which is the reset readme before the tutorial. But if we look at the official Team Porcupine Project Porcupine and we look at the commits, we can see that there's supposed to be two more over here. And it's not being pulled in properly. And as far as I know, this is exactly how it's supposed to work to sync this. Uh, I not know if there's something sort of weird or broken in my current build. As far as I can tell, everything is set up properly in the repo. Um, I mean, it's only got the one reference, but that's okay. So I'm not 100% sure while it's not, why it's not pulling in the latest. We can fix this with the command line, though. If we go to the... Um, do we want to go to the gear? I guess so. If we click on the gear and open in git shell, this is in Windows, I think on the Mac there'll be something very similar, or just a terminal, you should still have the git command line. So this will open up the command line version of, well, it's just going to open up a command line in the correct folder, and we can we can take a look, we've got all our files in here, and we are on the team porcupine slash master branch, but it's not, I guess it's not treating it right, but if we take a look at git remote, dash v we can see that there is a team porcupine remote in here so i guess there's just some sort of weird broken link it's not using this remote the way that we would expect which seems a little bit odd so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and do a manual git pull from the team porcupine repository i'm going to pull that in i am in the team porcupine slash master branch i'm going to pull in from the Team Porcupine repository master, and it'll pull those changes into our current branch where we are. There we go. So now it should have brought us up to speed. And in fact, if I, there we go, if I just toggle this, we can see that they're all in here now. I, this sync button is supposed to do that, but it's clearly not pulling things in from the right repo. I'm not sure. Something is slightly misconfigured maybe in my GitHub desktop. It may have worked for you, it may not. If need be though, just repeat those steps. Open in Git shell. Make sure you're in what is your quote-unquote remote branch, which is this one here. Uh, you can. That's what happens when you switch this. You switch branch, and in fact, if we do that, and I hit enter a couple of times, you can see now I'm in the master branch, or if I go to um, add YouTube link to readme, you can see I'm in the add YouTube link to readme. So make sure you are in the Team Porcupine master branch. 
which we are, and execute that command, git pull team porcupine master, or you can check the list of remotes in here. It should have worked, I don't know why it didn't. Anyway, if we do that, we get to what I want to test here. I'm on the team porcupine master branch, and if I open up the folder and open up the readme, I can see that the official branch has this link. But if I switch to my own personal master over here, I won't. And we'll go back over here, open this up. I don't have the link because my master branch is still the old one. So I want to update the, up the master branch, my personal master branch, to make sure that everything is 100% up to date. So I've got three branches right now. My personal master, I've got the one I used to work on, add YouTube link to read me, and I've got the upstream version from the official branch over here, Team Porcupine Master. Now, to update that readme file, I can actually merge either one of these branches, really. I could merge this into master, and that would work okay, technically. But again, let's pretend there's like 30 other people working on this project that have all made cha changes. So I want to make sure my master branch is up to date with the official master, which happens to include my changes now. Great stuff. So make sure you're on master, and make sure this top part is the upstream link, right? Team porcupine slash master. You can pick any branch as the source, but make sure that in this case, team porcupine slash master is set up. This button will be lit. Update from team porcupine slash master. This will update our personal master branch with the official master branch. So I'm gonna hit that button. It's gonna merge everything together. No conflicts, everything worked great. Excellent. Now our master branch is up to date. And in fact, so we're, again, we're on master. Let's confirm that. Let's go and take a look at our readme file. And yep, there it is. Great. So now that I've done all that, one thing I can do is I don't need to keep this add YouTube link to readme anymore. This whole branch, this development branch, we don't need to keep it. It was just a little testing environment for the changes that are now part of our master branch and in fact, even part of the official master branch. So I'm gonna switch back over here. It's worth noting that you can, with this selected, you can update our working branch from the master as well, which can happen. You can be working on a feature and then you're gonna to wanna to resynchronize to the official master to make sure you're up to date. So then you're gonna to wanna to sync your working branch. Even before you finish building your feature, you're gonna to wanna to update your working branch to the latest version, which you can easily do here. Make sure there's no conflicts and then keep working on your feature and then eventually commit your final features and upload it. Again, you can commit frequently. You can make a thousand commits in a single branch. Well, you can make literally unlimited commits in a single branch uh, before you're happy and satisfied with your work. It's a good idea to commit as often as possible. Every time you make a change, um, I mean, not literally every line, but, you know, first of all, every time you take a break, every time you finish working on a particular file, you know, anytime there's a good checkpoint that you might ever want to roll back to, make a commit. You can make unlimited commits, it's fine. So, anyway, we could update this, but there's no point. We're really done with this branch completely. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the gear and we're going to delete add YouTube link to readme because this was just a development branch. We don't need any more. All the work is saved. I can delete just my local copy. I can also delete my copy that is over on my personal GitHub over here. So this is my personal GitHub, and I still have the other branch. I can delete this branch from the remote. Hell, I can delete this branch like many, many, many different ways, but I may as well go ahead and say, yeah, so this branch also exists on remote. Yeah, let's clean up both, that's fine. So I'm gonna say that. So now if I look, I shouldn't still have this branch, that's odd. Whoops, cancel, cancel, cancel. Oh, there we go, okay, just hadn't updated yet. There it is. So now we don't have our ad uh, YouTube link. And in fact, if I refresh my personal repository, I no longer have that extra branch either, which is great. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And of course, the official project never had that anyway. The official project should almost never have branches. Maybe we could do something like make a um, branch when there's a particular version issued. That's one way of doing it, although then there's taggings, there's all sorts of different things. But probably the master repo, the official master, will probably never have anything other than the one master branch, and that's it. So that's an example of the workflow that you can go there. I mean, obviously that's a very contrived example, but this could be a really significant change. You can decide to uh, radically transform a major, major component of the game and put it as one branch and one commit and put in your pull request. Again, if you can break things down as small as possible um, so that each, each pull request is focused on one specific feature, that makes it a lot easier to integrate in, also makes it a lot more likely that changes will be accepted. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. 
I think this workflow works. Again, I will probably work in the command line, and apparently this desktop thing is a little bit wonky. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do a tutorial for just working with the command line. You can find some great guides online, but it's not too bad. I mean, you can switch from one branch to another here by saying check out. So I can check out the Team Porcupine, and actually, uh, Team por Porcupine Master, the um, the Git Bash that comes with the desktop client, or the standalone Git Bash, uh, has autocomplete here, so you can tab to complete, it's very handy. So if I do this, this is the way that I can change from one branch to another. Um, ref name is ambiguous, so oh, that's interesting. I can switch back to the master, like that. I can make a new branch. The easiest way to make a new branch is to say, so start with your source branch. So I'm gonna be on master right now, and I'm gonna make a new sub branch. This is for some new feature, boom. So now I have made a new branch called some new feature that was cloned from master. I can make some changes over here. Like, um, I don't know, I can add a new file. So let's go to my folder here. I'm gonna add a new file, uh, text document, some file. I'm going to just put something in here. Blah, 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 save that. Okay, so I've got some file over here. And then, I again, I could be working here. The the GUI did notice my new branch, knows that I'm in that branch. If I go to changes, it knows that there's a new file. I can make a commit from here, or I can make a commit from in here. Uh, so I would have to add the file. I would have to stage it. If I do a git status, I know there's one file here that is changed or new that's not being tracked. I wanna add it. This is gonna be part of the stage for the next commit. If I check git status, it'll be in green here, but it specifically says, hey, this is a new file that's going to be added to this. And I'm gonna say, yeah, okay, I wanna now, I'm gonna commit this and put in a note, um, add some file to the project. So now I've committed that. And I can keep making changes commit and, and making commits, change, commit, change, commit, change, commit. And at some point I can decide to do something with this branch. I can, I can publish this branch to the remote, which means it would show up under the list over here in, well, my personal version of it. Um, and I can decide to make a pull request. Because again, I think I can make a pull request without having published the branch to the remote, which is actually kind of nice and can stop you from um, even your own personal repo. If you don't want your, your online repo to have your branches, then you don't have to push the branch out. But the, the thing is, when you push a branch to a, your remote, is it makes a backup of it. If your computer bursts into flames, you'll have a clone. So anyway, I can make a pull request for my own project to put it in my own master, but again, that probably won't happen very much. Alternatively, you'll most likely do this, where you'll be making a pull request into the other project. I just don't know why that sync didn't work. That's very disappointing. This actually, I'm, I'm actually quite happy with this client. I think it's quite spiffy, with the exception that for some reason that sync button wasn't working, and maybe I set up something wrong, but I don't think so. It might work for you, it might not. Push comes to shove, you can manually get the sync running, but again, by switching to, oh yeah, here's here's what's neat. That new file, right, which exists in my folder, look what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna go git checkout, I'm gonna move back to my master branch, and the file goes away. Then I'm gonna switch back to some new feature, and the file comes back. It's fantastic, it's a great little workflow. Uh, really, really, really good. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I think that's it. Make a fork the project, clone it to your computer, make a branch, chain, make changes to your files, do everything like that, commit everything, and eventually make a pull request to the official project to say, hey, I would like this included to the official project. And then at some point, me, or if we get more, um, more managers later on, someone will go and say, yep, that's good, or no, that needs some extra changes, and that'll be that. Thank you very much for watching, folks. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you everyone who continues to make Project Porcupine a reality by supporting us on Patreon. You guys are supporting us through August and early September and including these mic check supporters, we've got Drazion, Jan Tori Vell, Julian Auger Lafon, Craig Mortel, Neil Blakey Milner, Ole Peter Talgo, Wes Oldenboving, Kale the Quick, Valiant Cake Fiend, Aaron Toivison, Michael McClintock, Marius Field Vold, Speedy Savant, Jason Yanity, Adjective, Steven Steger, Kupro Panda, Yuko Finn, and absolutely everyone who's watched, shared, favorited, and subscribed these videos. I appreciate you very, very much.